On the phone, waiting very patiently for uh, five or six minutes now, is Hastings District Mayor Lawrence Yule. Mayor Yule, thank you for joining us. We really appreciate your time and your patience. Can you just update us uh, on that E. coli indicator in the water tanker? Do you know anything more now than you knew when you had your media conference earlier today? No, I don't. But there's two things in your intro that I need to clarify, just because this is a, this is a big issue and our people need to understand the real facts. We have not issued a boil water notice. Uh, but what we have done is we've put chlorine in the whole Hastings, Flaxmere and Bridge Power water supply and that will be effective in treating any bugs in the water at 6 o'clock tonight. And we've said that in the meantime, if you want to be extra cautious, um, you should boil your water. But it is not a boiled water notice. OK, so you say, you say extra cautious. So at the moment, your senses, and I got this impression very strongly from watching the media conference earlier today, that this is either a false positive, sorry, well, yeah, a false positive, or some other form of contamination which doesn't impact on the entire district's water supply. That is very much my sense. Um, and in fact, if we weren't in what I call war territory, so we're in peacetime, we wouldn't have done this. But in reality, we have a secure supply in Hastings that has had no incident or test result of any abnormality for a long, long time. OK, let's move on from there, though. You don't have a secure supply and have not have long No, we don't. To... No, we don't. You don't. How long has it been insecure for? Oh, sorry. Um, well, clearly, the, the, uh, the, the, the fact that there has been contamination of the Havelock supply means it, it hasn't been secure. OK, we it wasn't secure, secure now, when... Though. No, it's important it, it... I say this, John. We have secured it now. So it's chlorinated, and as long as people boil their water, their water is perfectly safe to drink now. OK, there wasn't... Uh, it wasn't uh, clear in uh, last year. This Tonkin and Taylor report is looking at an E. coli contamination <coughs> in bore 3. Correct. What do you think the source of that E. coli contamination was in the Havelock North water supply? OK, so... Bore 3, uh, there are three bores that service Havelock North. Um, yep. Bore 3 is sort of by itself, and there are two other bores that are close to each other, one and two. E. coli and bore 3, what was the source of that? We don't know. Um, in other words, we had a presence of E. coli um, after a rainfall event. So when that happened, it's happened tw three times. So when that happened, at the last time we said we will close that bore. That bore has remained closed since October of last year. Valve turned off, not used. Bores 1 and 2, which have been supplying Havelock North for 35 years and w which remained on, have never had an indicator or a positive test of anything in their water. OK, you've, you, yeah, yeah. You, have had, uh, you have had to use chlorine in the, in the water from Havelock North before, haven't you? We no, have on 19, three incidents. 19 yeah. July 2013, E. coli, chlorine introduced. 2nd of October 2015, E. coli, chlorine introduced. You also have... And I just wonder why you have not addressed this more singularly, an issue with the Th Central Hawke's Bay District Council, who are south of you, and sewerage treatment facilities in Waipawa and Waipukaro that keep discharging untreated or not fully treated sewerage into the Tukituki River. Yep. Um, we all, the, 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 the concept that somehow this has gone from the Tukituki River in this, into the aquifer is being considered, but I'd make this observation. It's highly likely, and we'll get the confirmed results tomorrow, that it is Campylobacter that is in the water. Um, Campylobacter does not easily survive in human sewerage unless the population that is excreting it actually has Campylobacter in significant numbers. So the chances of Campylobacter coming from Waipakarao or Waipawa down the river and into our system are actually pretty low. John Freeman of the Central Hawke's Bay District Council confirmed to me this afternoon that on the 6th, 7th and 8th of August, that heavy rainfall, yep. which of course inland between you and Taupo brought about that heavy snowfall, yep. uh, caused sewerage that hadn't fully been treated to flow into the Tuki Tuki River, that there was an overflow of not fully treated sewerage going down the Tuki Tuki towards Havelock North. Do you believe that is material and have you been told about that overflow? I have not personally been told about that overflow, but I imagine the regional council and the staff that are investigating all options, including that, have been. Um, and absolutely, things like that are material as part of the investigation. If I look at the uh, Hawke's Bay Today coverage, 2nd of March this year, court action possible over treatment plants comp compliance. Uh, 
Currently, Waipukuro has reached its limit of exceedances. That is, the amount of time sewerage that is not fully treated can go into the Tukituki River. March of last year, the same thing. Three months before Tukituki runs clean. If we go back to December of 2014, harmful bacteria and wastewater are being released into the Tukituki River at unacceptable levels. Now, you keep threatening to take action against Central Hawke's Bay, and you don't. And I wonder, was it only a matter of time before people in your area became sick through contaminated water. Look, John, I'm, I'm sorry to say this, but you are wrong. Um, I and my council do not have any responsibility for water quality. That is the Hooks Bay Regional Council. I am not part of that organisation. No, absolutely not. But you keep threatening to take legal action against them. That's a statement no, of fact, isn't no, it? No, we don't. Yes, you we do. Have, Ian hey, Maxwell, Ian no, Maxwell, he, does he... He doesn't work for us. He works for the Hawke's Bay Regional Council. Yes, and I'm the Mayor of Hastings. I and do the, not have any jurisdiction over water quality and enforcement. That is the Hawke's Bay Regional Council, and you would need to talk to them. The, I have the, never threatened, and nor I have any jurisdiction the over the... Point the is, the point Council. is that there are a whole lot of people in Hastings, where you are the mayor, and in the Hawke's Bay region, where another council presides, who are sitting there quietly, ignoring the fact that raw sewerage is regularly ending up in the Tukituki River. Um, I have no knowledge, apart from what you've just told me, about how often raw sewerage is going into the Tukituki River. That is absolutely the responsibility of the Hawke's Bay Regional Council. And I actually encourage you to talk to them about that. I just don't know because it's, mo it's not my field. So have you tried hard enough? Do you think you, the Hawke's Bay Regional Council, the Central Hawke's Bay District Council, do you think that you have been collectively in your area, the local politicians who now have 3,000 people made unwell by Campylobacter, have you tried hard enough to make your water good enough? Uh, well, I, I believed we, we, had, we had until this event. So, and I need to be clear, I represent the Hastings District Council, which has Hastings and Havelock North and Flaxmere and in a big rural area. Um, I'm not Central Hawke's Bay, nor am I the Hawke's Bay Regional Council, which has responsibility for the enforcement of water quality and discharges, etc. But clearly, in Havelock North, we've had 3,200 3, people been affected by a large waterborne uh, disease outbreak. And as the Mayor of the, the city and district that gives that water for which people pay for, I absolutely feel responsibility for that. And I am working as hard as I can to, one, keep people safe, which is why we did what we did today in chlorinating the water, two, get to the bottom of what happened, and three, make sure this never, ever happens again here or anywhere else in New Zealand. Do you think you'll be able to do that in the context of events you describe yourself as not being able to control, but which directly impact on water quality in your region? Um, yes, I think we will. And in fact, that's one of the reasons why I welcome the government's inquiry, because I have no idea at this point how this has happened. I, and based on my um, sort of knowledge and understanding, I cannot find any human or technical fault in terms of how the Hastings District Council has won the water supply. That being said, we've got a major problem. So the government and its inquiry will look at every angle from and that they'll announce the terms of reference on Monday, but we'll look at every angle from the health aspect, the land use aspect, how we manage water resources, how we actually treat water, and the monitoring of that. And I encourage that, and I'm, I, I welcome it, as I've told the Minister this afternoon. Thank you, Lawrence. We really appreciate your time, and we appreciate you waiting so long to do that interview.